Hello everyone, this is Introduction to Real-Time Systems course. So today's lecture is about lecture note 10. So today's topic is an example of real-time associated with uh, machine learning. So that is, today we will, I will give you an example that gives the timing guarantees to machine learning applications. The, the title is RTMOT. Confidence-aware real-time scheduling framework for multi-object tracking tasks. This is background for safety-critical tasks. As you can see in the figures, autonomous driving needs many features such as object detection and object tracking, traffic light detection, lane flow detection, or trajectory predictions. So in autonomous driving cars, there are some camera cameras and then LiDAR sensors. Using this kind of sensors and ca cameras, the autonomous driving car should be able to do this kind of features. And then object detection means, suppose that you have these figures, then you can capture that, oh, this is a object, which is human, and then this is a, an object, which is car. That's the object object detections. As you can see in the figures, object tracking is less, uh, less associate all the frames, let's say every one second. And every one, se at one second after the car is moving, and then you should know this one is numbered five is after some times, this one is the same cars as the previous uh, car, which is labeled as five. That's the object tracking. So the problem is that multiple DNN tasks share limited computing resources because in cars, we need to reduce the cost and reduce the weight for the computing resources. So many DNN tasks such as object tracking or multiple object tracking or multiple object detection from multiple cameras could be possible. And also, if you think about why these features are needed, so we need the timely inference with the real-time guarantees, essentials. So then how can you ensure timely inference of safety critical tasks like object detection or object tracking? On limited computing resources while maximizing the, their accuracy. The accuracy means if the DNN model says that this is human, if it's right, yeah, that is accurate. Otherwise, it is inaccurate. So this is a motivation. So with that motivations, today I will explain an example of about the multi-object tracking tasks. So the, the, this is paper published in 2022. The name is RTMOT, Confidence Aware Real-Time Scheduling Framework for Multi-Object Tracking Tasks. By the way, this RTSS is the, the number one uh, international conference in the area of real-time systems. So in every year, only 30 to 40 papers to be published. This slide is a motivation of the paper itself. And then it is similar to the, uh, the previous papers, the background of the safety critical uh, tasks. So we are talking about the autonomous vehicle, concurrent perception with multiple sensors and deep learning based multi-object tracking tasks. For the safety of autonomous vehicles, we aim at satisfying first time guarantee of all tracking tasks. Please watch this video. Then object tracking or object detection is not finished within a predefined uh, threshold. So it is very dangerous. That means although there is car in front, the autonomous driving cars cannot stop, cannot be stopped. So timing guarantees of the all tracking task is very important. I mean, what I mean by all is that there are many cameras. So let's, let's say we have five cameras, then each camera have different angles. And then they, they should perform the object tracking. The second one is a tracking accuracy. So tracking accuracy should be maximized. That means although 
object tracking tasks are tasks are performed uh, in a within the threshold. However, the DNM model's accuracy is very low, so we cannot identify whether the this the front car is the which cars or front car is real object or not. So these two requirements should be satisfied. R1, timing guarantee of all tracking tasks. R2, tracking accuracy maximization. However, challenge to, it is challenging to satisfy both timing guarantee and accuracy maximization because so we, we are, the resources are limited. The multiple tasks share the limited computing resources while requiring heavy computations. So here, we have multiple cameras in autonomous vehicles. That means, for example, six cameras, we have six uh, multi-object tracking tasks. And each one needs uh, DNM-based heavy computations, but we have very limited resources to reduce the cost or cost and weight for the computing resources. There is some categories of the multi-object tracking architectures. So we focus on DNM-based tracking by detection approaches. So in these approaches, a multi-object tracking process is divided into two. First one is front-end det detector, which means detection of the object in a single video frame. So detection first, we have the figures. We have... Then we will detect object first, which is exactly object detections. And then back-end tracker Associate, associate all the matched object detected in the current frame with uh, those frame, those from the previous frame. So we have this kind of two uh, processes. So here we have input image at time t, and then we perform object detections by this proton proton detector. Then as a result, oh this is car, and then this is car. So that's the result by the object detection. And then backend trackers associate all the object with the, those from the previous frames. So this is a previous object at t minus one, and then this is a current object at t. So their, their shape or their uh, locations could be changed. And this backend trackers match this one. So using this feature or uh, based on the prediction of the movement, using many methods, this backend trackers match match this two. So we have this kind of two uh, stage tracking by detection approaches. By addressing the limited resources, we considered two detection approaches. So high, so detection can provide a trade-off between the timing and accuracy. So we consider this two. First one is high confidence. So detect the full frame, the entire frame detections. So it results in high accuracy and but high computational cost. And then we have an option for performing low confidence detection object detections. It detects partial frame detections, like only here. So how to choose this one is already uh, already studied by the many uh, previous researchers. So we can, we can choose the most important part. So then compare this to, it yields the low accuracy because in this kind of object cannot be processed, cannot be detected. However, we can reduce the computation cost and computation time. That's the how we can address the limited resources. On the other hand, if you think about the association uh, Part, we also we also um, adjust the load. So for example, for high confidence uh, associations, we apply DNM based matching. It it ma it associate the object using feature map. Then it takes long time, so it will be higher accuracy but higher computation cost. So on the other hand. We, also, we can apply the low confidence association, which uses just IOU based matchings. It takes 
little uh, the shorter time than high confidence association, but it is the low accuracy. So then, in summary, we have four options. So for detection, high confidence, tracking high confidence, detection, low confidence, and tracking high confidence. So here, four, HH, HL, LH, and LL. So these four combinations are available for trade-off between R1 and R2. What I mean by trade-off is that suppose that we will choose this high confidence detection and high confidence tracking. Then we can maximize the accuracies, but it takes the longest time among these four. On the other hand, suppose that we choose low confidence detection with low confidence tracking. Then although we can minimize the time to perform this detection and tracking, but this accuracy is the lowest among these four. Right? Then we have enough time. Then we should choose HH approaches. Or if you are suffering from uh, limited time, then we should choose low LL. Using that four options, we have uh, pre we conducted a pre-experiment and then we have some observations. So we have some opportunities. That means the accuracy and time are significantly different according to the detection tracking combination. That means so if you see these uh, names, or HH means we will execute uh, all the HH approaches to 50 frames. But here, this means the first in the first frame, we will apply the low confidence detection and high confidence tracking. And then second frame, high confidence detection and low confidence association. And we repeat this process for 25 times. Then uh, you can understand other things, right? So for example, this one. So you can apply the high competence detection and low competence association. So you will repeat, repeat for that 50 frames. So if you see all these uh, the names, except these two, all high high or all low low. So in here's the ratio between low competence and high competence regardless regardless of detection association is so is the same right same number of low competence something the same number of high competence something so however since this time time is to perform this or the execution 50 or the execution uh, for 50 frames, if you see this time, it varies. We can, we expect that, yeah, this is the highest and this is the lowest. Yeah, that's true. But if you see this in the middle, there are some variations, right? Although the ratio between the lowest, the low confidence something and high confidence something is the same. And then if you see the motor, you can regard this as uh, accuracy. Then, yeah, it, we expect that, yeah, this is the highest and then this is lowest. Yeah, that's true. But if you see it in the middle, you can see we have a, there, there is a significant uh, difference between the first one and the last one. So which one we should choose? I think it's uh, this one, right? This one. The time is the lowest, but accuracy is about the same. It's not much different the difference uh, between this one and the all high confidence approaches. So the implication of this graph is that we have some opportunities. So when we apply some HH, HL, LH, LL approaches, so we should think about what is the trade-off. So we should smartly choose the right one. So that's the implication of this graph. Then the challenge is how can you find the best combination to satisfy R1 and R2 at runtime? So this graph is based on the offline, right? It's based on the offline-based calculations. After 
executing all the situations and then after that we'll look at this graph and then find some observation but how can you find the best combination to satisfy r1 and r2 like this one at runtime then the, this paper rtmot goal is to design a framework for multiple MOT tasks which achieve time guarantee and accuracy maximization the goal one is how can you design the system architecture to provide control now to explore trade-off between R1 and R2? That means we should enable to choose HHHL, LHLL. That's a G1. G2 is under that architecture. So how can we efficiently utilize the proposed system architecture to achieve this time guarantee as well as accuracy maximization? Then, if we focus on G1, that is, how can we design the system architecture to provide a control now to explore a trade-off between timing and accuracy? So to this end, we propose dynamic tracking by detection execution pipeline to provide multiple choices of a pair of detection and tracking model. The operations for that, I already explained that. It's very simple. You can choose one of the high confidence and low confidence detection and then you can also choose high confidence or low confidence tracking trackers and logic is very simple but yeah implementation is not that simple for the second part we need to uh, estimate this confidence so that is called confidence estimator which captures the relation between the object reliability and uh, R2. R2 means accuracy. So for example, suppose that we have three tasks. Three tasks. Then, suppose that now we are only allowed to choose HH for only one because of limited time. Then which one we should choose? So then, we should know that if we choose the first one, that's we can accuracy we can improve accuracy this amount or if you choose the second one to be executed by hh then we need to know we need to know the expected value of the improved accuracies for that so then we can if you know if we know that we can choose the the object so that maximize the accuracy if we choose the hh policy so to do that we need a competence estimator then we need a frame level scheduler so that is you know, this is ll this is lh this is hl and then this is a hh approaches suppose that now there are three four tasks and then if we select to be choose this first one as LL, so we can improve the accuracy this amount. This is expected value. Also, if we choose, if we choose to execute the first one with the HL approaches, then expected uh, accuracy improvement is this amount. Then, or for example, task four. If we choose to execute task for now with the HH policies. It can improve the expected improvement is about this one and then the frame schedulers check the schedulability then suppose that we will execute this one then it can we can guarantee that all this task is a schedule this job is schedulable as well as all the futures and the current jobs jobs are schedulable if they are executed the LL approaches, that means we can guarantee the timing for all the jobs, at least LL approaches. Then we can generate this kind of table. So this is schedulable, schedulable, not schedulable. This number means expected improvement. Then we can choose the the largest in, largest improvement the uh, accuracy improvement, but it should be schedulable. That is 0 0.8, this one is or this one. Right. Then we can choose to execute this one. So that's the prime level scheduler does. 
the to this end, we went in the schedulability analysis we learned in the previous lectures. Okay, let me explain the details of this first dynamic tracking by detection execution pipeline, second confidence estimator, third frame level scheduler. As I explained in the previous slide, yeah, dynamic tracking by de detection execution pipeline is shown as follows. We have two options for detection, high confidence, that means full frame, low confidence means uh, just partial important frame. Then detection tracking, in terms of tracking, we have two options. For high confidence, we will uh, apply the DNN-based uh, complex approaches. For lower, price com lower confidence, we simply we apply the simple approaches that takes a low, the shorter time. Then one may wonder how low confidence detection works because we focus on only partial frame instead of entire frame. So yeah, let me explain. Suppose that frame time P, this is the current. Then suppose that in this case, we apply the low confidence detection. That means only this part is detected. Then this is the frame at T minus one, previous frame. And then this is a frame at T minus two. And suppose that this at these frames, uh, the high confident, confident detection is performed. Then suppose that here, uh, three objects detected here. And then at this point, for some reasons, like movement or some occlusions, only two detected frame is here. And at, then in frame at T's, we are focusing here. So yeah, it is impossible to detect these two, right? So in this case, Although we we did, did not perform the other areas, we will reuse the object, the same location object from the previous. What I mean by previous is in terms of this object, the previous means just the previous frame, t minus one. But however, in this in this object, since there is no object detection here, this one is comes from the frame at t minus two. So then, yeah, in summary, if you perform this low confidence detection for this partial frame, the detected object within the partial frame, so we don't, so that's a straightforward, we can just apply. For other part, we can reuse the previous detected object with the same locations. Then how reliable is the motion of the previous object? We will define that motion confidence. So for example, yeah, this is, Fresh, this is a uh, detected at frame T, so this is fresh. So motion confidence is very high. But for example, the, this one, this one is not detected here and not detected here, and detected at frame T minus two. So that is not fresh. So this is motion confidence of this object is very low. So that's the definition of a motion confidence of, of our approach. Likewise, one may wonder how high confidence tracking works. It reuses the appearance information of the object detected in the previous frame. That means, suppose that at time t minus two, yeah, the same example, three objects detected, and then feature map of those object, objects are calculated. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, at time frame t minus one frame, so this one is not detected, so that means we have feature map of all these two. Then, yeah, it's a different. So suppose that time, time frame T, the three objects detected, and we have feature map. So we will compare this feature map with the previous one, but here the object, the same object is detected in time T minus one, so we can compare this feature map. So however, if you think about this object, it is not detected uh, at t minus one frame, so we will compare this feature map with the previous one. So which one is which one is better in terms of the confidence? So this one is better, right? So how reliable is the appearance of the previous object? We can define that as appearance confidence. 
So using the notion of uh, motion confidence and appearance, appearance confidence, I explained before. So we can design the multi-object tracking confidence estimator. So in summary, how reliable is the motion? Size or, that is size or position of the previous object. That is the motion confidence. Also, how reliable is the appearance, which is a feature of the previous object? Is the appearance confidence. Then here, I already explained the notion of confidence, but what about estimator? To estimate the confidence, the first question is, how can you update or track the change of confidence object? So to this end, we need to develop a confidence update rule. The second question is, how can you estimate confidence improvement according to different selection of the detection and tracking model? I mean, HH, HL, LH, LL. If I choose one of them, how can we calculate the confidence improvement? To this end, we need the confidence estimation rules. Let me answer the first question. How can we update or track the change, changing confidence of object? So these are confidence update rules. If object is detected at this frame, yeah, that's confident motion confidence is uh, full, which is 100 percent Then yeah, this means also at time t minus seven, yeah, that object is detected. That object detected. Then in the, those times, because of occlusion, that object is not detected at corresponding frame. So in that case, we will reduce the confidence. How amount? So we can predefine how much it should be decreased. And then you can linearly decrease it until here. Now suppose that at time t minus two, yeah, it is we uh, we detect that object. Then, as I mentioned, yeah, whenever we detect that corresponding object, that object motion confidence is full, which is one hundred percent. So this is confidence update rule. Here, object detected confidence one. And then confident drop, drop rate depends on object motions, velocity and size. And then, yeah, confidence recovery, that means object is detected again. So we will increase the confidence go, going back to 100%. Then let me explain the confidence estimation rule by an, uh, answering the second question. How can you estimate confidence improvement according to different selection of detection tracking models? So we have these situations. We have detection, high confidence and low confidence detections. So high confidence we support. So in this example, three objects are detected. Then for low confidence, we have only one object is detected. And then for tracking, we have also two options. For high confidence tracking, if these three are detected, and then we have feature maps up here. And then for low confidence detections, although we have only one object, then yeah, this feature is fresh, but these two objects is not detected. So the object at previous frame. So feature is also yeah, we have we you reuse the previous frame's uh, feature map. Then let me detail the case where high confidence detection is chosen. Then in that case, we these three objects are detected. And then we have two cases. High confidence tracking is performed and then low confidence tracking is performed. Then suppose that high confidence tracking is performed. Then the motion and appearance confidence of all objects can increase by up by just 100 percent that means this one we already detect already detect detect so their motion confidence is 100 percent also since objects are all detected then we can extract the feature maps so we feature map is fresh so we will set the uh, all the appearance the appearance confidence of all this object is 100%. So that's the detection high and tracking high case. 
On the other hand, uh, if we apply the low confidence tracking, so that means the motion confidence of all objects increases. So yeah, it's the same. It depends on here. So we detect all the objects, so we can set the object the motion confidence to 100%, while the appearance confidence of them can decrease. So because we will not extract the features. The features are extracted only for the high tracking confidence. So although object is detected, we will not perform the feature extractions. So we will decrease the appearance confidence of all objects. Now let's look at the case where low confidence detection is performed. So in this case, this object is detected at this frame, but while other frame is not detected. Then in this case, if high confidence tracking is performed, then we can extract the feature map of this one, right? Because this is the only object that is detected at this frame. So we can increase the motion and appearance confidence of object of ROI, region of interest. That means within here. So this object, motion confidence is 100%, of appearance confidence is also 100%. However, what about these guys? These guys, these guys they are not detected by the object detections. So we will decrease the motion of competence of these objects. Right? Also, since this object is not detected, we cannot extract the feature maps. So the appearance competence of those objects should be decreased, which is the same. So this is a situation where we can choose low competence detection and high competence tracking. On the other hand, if we perform the low competence tracking, then what happens? So here situation is the same. So these two are not detected. So we, we should reduce the, the motion competence of this object, but we can increase the, we can set 100% of the motion confidence of this object. So, however, if we apply the low confidence tracking, so although this is detected, so we don't, we cannot, we do not extract the feature because extraction feature extraction is performed only for this high confidence. Okay. So, motion confidence and appearance confidence of object outside of ROI, these two, which is the same. We should decrease that because we we do we cannot detect object and we cannot perform the feature extractions. However, different from the low competence detection and high competence tracking cases, motion confidence of object ROI, this one is increased, which is based on here. And the while their appearance confidence can will decrease because the low confidence method the tracking method do not perform the feature extraction. Then we can express this equation to like here. It's very it looks very complex, but I already explained all the high level all, all the high level uh, ideas. So then we have this motion confidence. Yeah, if we that object is detected, it is one hundred percent. It is not detected, decreased, detected one hundred percent is something like here. And appearance confidence. Feature may be extracted, yeah, it's 100%, otherwise reduced, feature may be extracted, reduced, reduced, and then here. Then, the object confidence is a multiplication of motion confidence and appearance confidence. So we have this uh, final confidence, which is, which is calculated by motion confidence multiplied by appearance confidence. So then we can answer, how can it estimate confidence improvement according to different selection of the detection and tracking models. So for example, this object is now in here. Then if we apply the high confidence and then high, high confidence detection and high confidence tracking, then the improvement is this amount. However, if we apply that same HH approach to a object, whose confidence is here, then improvement is this, this long. It's not, it's much smaller than this amount.
So we can answer this question too. Then we are moved to the third uh, item, which is a frame level flexible scheduler. We call that non preemptive fixed priority class. So basically, we will apply we apply the non preemptive fixed priority scheduling for multiple MOT tasks, but we will modify. That's why the name is MPFP plus this flex. So that is a confidence aware detection tracking model selection. So MPFP, MPFP flex goal is we will provide offline timing guarantees. That means schedulability analysis. Then also the second object, uh, the goal is maximize the tracking accuracy at runtime while not compromising timing guarantees done by this offline offline schedulability analysis. Yeah, to this end, uh, in theoretically, it's very complex. There are some lemma theorems and proof, which is not that intuitive. But I will explain. I will give a high level explain of that. High level explanation is not that difficult. Then first, to provide offline timing guarantees, we will reuse the existing result. So if the following equation holds, task set is scheduled by MPFP. So let's just ignore this flag, the original non preemptive fixed priority with the LL executions. In the beginning, we calculate the, all the executions per execution time for LL, HH, HL, LLH. Then I think you are, you are, I assume that all of you guys are familiar with this one, the response time analysis, the execution time itself plus max blocking time plus all the higher priority executions. So yeah, this well-known result. If you remove this flex, yeah, this is a well-known MPFP schedulability analysis. So then I, I claim that even though MPFP flex is not the same as MPFP, it can share uh, this offline schedulability analysis. In reality, we design this MPFP flex such that this offline scheduler with the guarantee is not compromised. So I will explain how to do that. But yeah, you should remember that yeah, we will share this MPFP, MPFP flex share the same scheduler offline scheduler with the conditions for the original non preemptive fixed priority. Then for the second goal, max, to maximize tracking accuracy at runtime while not compromising time guarantees, at every scheduling decision and to find the schedulable pair of detection and tracking model for every active task. So here waiting queues. Then under original non printed fixed priorities, we should choose this one, the highest priority waiting, highest priority active jobs. However, for every uh, active jobs, we will calculate uh, this table. So if this is executed now with the LL, it is schedulable or not. If it is executed LH, it is schedulable or not. For example, like this one, if we execute task I now with the HH executions, it is schedulable or not. We will check. So how to check? We will, uh, we will consider all the, the, the effect of all effect of the corresponding task execution now to all the jobs. All the job means the currently active job and then a job will be released. So suppose that we will decide to execute this one with the, let's say, LH executions. Then we should guarantee that all other executions is schedulable as long as they will be executed LL. That's the idea. Then, even though MPFP original policies choose the highest priorities, we can choose any of them as long as it, it is a it is a proof it is proved that it schedule it it makes it does not compromise schedulability of itself and all other things. Then, next question is which one should be choose among all the schedulable pairs? Then, yeah, in the previous slide, I explained how to calculate the improvement, right? Then based on that, uh, that expect the improvement calculations, we have these numbers. 
then we should choose the largest number with the schedulable and finally yeah we should is choose to execute task k with the lh lh pair of the detection and tracking approaches let me give you then let me give you more details on this one then select best competency from the, among the schedule of repair. Then how to guarantee the schedulability. I already explained the high level, but yeah, I will give you more detail. The first one, so we will select the, we will uh, consider the schedulability of selected active task. So suppose that we will decide to select tau k now, then what about tau k's schedulability? Yeah, then next one, if we choose to execute this one now with the LH executions, then what about the schedule of, of not selected active tasks? Then also inactive tasks, which will be released later. Suppose the time now time is T and then it will be experienced, it will be released after T. Then we should consider all these tasks. Yeah, then let's look at the first one, task itself to be executed at time T0. And here, suppose that we will decide to execute this one, then with the LH executions, and then we know the worst case execution time, then it will be finished within here, right? So, this point, as long as this point is no later than this deadline, yeah, then itself is a schedulable. So we should check current time plus worst case of this is less than this deadline. We will compare that. If it's true, yeah, we, we said that yeah, this is this is schedulable. The second, we will focus on active task, not selected. So at T0, we are we decide to choose the task k with the lh executions then it will finish no later than here so th since this is worst case execution time then this task then suppose that we will execute this one is a non preemptive fixed priority scheduling so there is some higher priority tasks higher practice active tasks and we will calculate how many how much uh Executions of higher priority tasks, we will calculate and we will add all these things until here. And then suppose that this inactive task is released here, then suppose that it is also higher practice. We will execute the, all the worst cases. Then despite the worst case, suppose that here is point that the latest point, latest time instant at which all the higher priority executions of how I is finished. Then I can start. I mean how I can start here. And this this point this point is no later than its deadline, then we can say that yeah, this is a schedule. Then we will check this one for all the active tasks, which is not task K. The next one is inactive tasks at time t0. And then, yeah, it is supposed to release like here. Then calculation is the same, task k, and then all higher priority executions. Then, yeah, it will calculate the worst case behaviors. So suppose that this is point, this is the latest point such that all the higher priority executions that is released before here is finished in the worst case. Then you can execute here, then we will compare this point and this point. If the time to finish this execution is no later than its deadline in the schedule. And so far I explained, suppose that we will choose task K with the LH. To this end, we should check this point, this task schedulability and or a higher or task schedulability which is which is not which is in the waiting queue but it is not executed now and then 
all the tasks which is inactive now but will be executed, will be released. If all the tasks are schedulable, then we can say that task K, we, will, we can, if you choose task K with LH executions, yeah, it is schedulable. Then, then, we check that, let's go back to here, we check that, yeah, this is true. So now I explained only this part where task K is selected as a execute, execution with LH. For other point, also, yeah, it, it will check all the tasks. Then in summary, for all active tasks, all active jobs, we'll check whether it can execute with a low, low, low H, high, high L, high, high HL, HH. And to do that, it will calculate for three conditions. It is schedulable, as active job is schedulable, and then inactive jobs are schedulable. If it's true, then you can calculate the expected imp actress improvement. And then after all that, execute that jobs, who, which is schedulable and then whose expected improvement is largest. Then this the theorem one I showed in the previous slide works. Although we will change the non-print fixed priority to the non-print fixed priority with the flex which is different, runtime behavior is different. Although that, they, we can share this same schedule with the analysis because I, we designed that, we designed that uh, the schedulability guaranteed by this offline schedulability is not compromised when, when we change the schedule by selecting the another job or job with a larger execution time than this LL. I already mentioned this one, so we will design runtime mechanism such that it does not compromise offline schedule with analysis and it maximizes the objective, which is overall accuracy. So to this end, we need some very complex uh, proof and then derivation. So for the evaluation, our setting is as follows. We use this hardware and then this software and for detecting we use yolo v5 and for tracking we apply osnet then for the data set we have the way more open data set the evaluation result is as follows on the light workload existing studies as well as our one it works well and under heavy workload our ours yield the timing guarantee with the high accuracy that means you can regard this as a existing study that means so this one is, we will execute always LL, and always HL, always LH, always HH. And then here, Y axis means accuracy. And then if it is not shown, that means the schedulability is not guaranteed. So we don't care about that. So here, if you see here, the, we have two tasks, six frame, four frame, and then we will increase the workload. Increase the workload. Then uh, with light workload, so these two, these are these guys are good, also good. So however, in these guys like HH, if we increase the low workload, it is not schedulable. It's meaningless. Then we have two hours. First one is I explained. This is RTM with flex. For RTM with flex, with the non priority inversion means when we choose, we have some options for the table. So when we choose the options, we restrict the options to the highest priority tasks. So that means in the highest part can be executed with the LL, LH, HL, and HH. We only give the four options. In the, if you see in the tables, we will give all the options to the all the uh, active jobs, but this restrict to only task whose price is highest. So yeah, if, if yeah, if we focus the 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 most heavy workload, then the LL works works in terms of timing, but others it does not uh, meet the time timing. However, this LL, so since we will apply the the lowest possible the lowest possible detection and the lowest possible 
associations, its accuracy is very low. However, ours achieved the highest performance. This too. So this is the result. And also, if we uh, conduct a set of uh, set of experiments, experiment with the four tasks, four tasks. So also, this is a light node, and this is heavy load. The result is quite similar. So with the light have right light workload so this kind of ll uh, hh or hl works well but it is not scalable as we increase the workload and then here all other existing studies miss the deadline except this ll one but our one is better than uh, give the timing guarantee as well as maximize the accuracy then let's summary the RTMOT. So we propose RTMOT, a new MOT execution and scheduling framework for multiple MOT tasks, which achieves both timing guarantee and accuracy maximization. And RTMOT implements dynamic tracking by detection execution pipeline to provide multiple choices of a pair of detection and tracking models. Then also confidence estimator to capture the relation between the object reliability and tracking accuracy. And finally, we design and develop confidence-aware frame-level scheduler to select the best model choice for tracking accuracy while providing time guarantees. This is the end of lecture today.